Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to take our simple minimap and make some scripts to control it. Let's begin. So this is what we have created in the previous video. I have a player in here. There are some enemies and some buildings. You can see on the minimap various icons for the player, the enemies, and the buildings. I can attack the enemies and they got a different icon when they are flying. Okay. The minimap is composed of a camera rendering a specific layer into a render texture that is then displayed on the UI with a nice mask on top of it. So in this video we're going to take that and create a few scripts to make our minimap system very simple and clean. So first let's start by creating a new c -sharp script and let's call it minimap window. This will control our minimap window in here. So we can drag it in here. Okay, so first of all, to keep our code clean, let's put all of our various scripts in a specific namespace. So in here, let's make namespace minimap. So our code is nice and clean, everything is organized. Okay. Now in here, let's make a private static minimap window that will be our static instance. And on our awake, let's set that instance. Instance equals this. Let's make some static show and hide functions. So a public static void show, and then we'll have a public static void hide. On the show, we do instance.gameObject.setActive to false, simply hide the game object. Actually on show, we are going to set the active to true, and on hide, we are going to hide the game object. Okay, just like that. All right, so that's the basics for our minimap window. So let's make a simple game handler script just to test our code. So let's call it game handler and drag it onto our game handler object. So in here on update, let's test showing and hiding the minimap. So let's do uh, if input dot get key down and let's do keycode dot keypad plus. So when we hit keypad plus, let's go into the minimap dot minimap window and show our window. And when we hit the keypad minus, let's hide the window. And we can go up here and do using the minimap namespace, and we can now remove this. Okay, great. So when we hit keypad plus, it should show the minimap, keypad minus, it should hide the minimap. All right, let's see. Okay, here I am, there's the minimap, and if I hit minus, yep, it's gone, and if I hit plus, it shows. Okay, great. Very simple and very useful in case you want to hide it, for example, during a cutscene. All right. Now another script we're going to need is a script attached to each icon. This script will be responsible for handling each specific icon. So for example, when we resize the minimap, we want to change the icon size. So let's make a new c -sharp script. Let's name it minimap icon. Again, to keep our code clean, let's put it on the minimap namespace. And here we're going to make some simple show and hide functions as well. However, each minimap icon is different, so we're not going to use static. So simply do a public void show and a public void hide and do the same thing, game object dot set active. When we show, we set it to true. When we hide, we set it to false. So let's add this script to every single minimap icon. So here the player has an icon, so drag it onto there. The buildings each have a minimap icon, so drag it onto there. The enemies also have a minimap icon, and finally the enemy flying body. Okay, so all of our minimap icons now contain that script. So just for testing, let's do something with a player icon. Here on the game handler, let's add a serialized field for a private minimap icon for the player minimap icon, okay? And on our private void start, let's hide it after some time. So for that, I'm going to go up here and do using the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always you can grab for free from uncodemonkey.com. So in the utilities, I have the function timer, which triggers a function after some time. So after some time, let's do the player minimap icon dot hide after let's say two seconds. And two seconds after that, let's show. Okay, so after two seconds, the player minimap icon should hide, and after four seconds, it should show. So let's see that. Okay, there's the player, there's the icon, after two seconds, it's gone, and now it's visible again. Okay, great, we can now control each specific individual minimap icon. Great. 
Now the final element used in our minimap system is the camera, so let's make a script for that. Make a new C -sharp script and let's name it minimap camera. Let's drag it onto our minimap camera. Again, make it in the minimap namespace, keep everything nice and clean. And in here, let's also make a private static minimap camera for our instance. And we're going to set it on private void awake. And let's also grab a reference to our camera component. Minimap camera equals transform dot get component type camera. Okay. Now let's make a function to set the zoom. So a public void set zoom. And here we're going to receive a float for the orthographic size since our camera is in 2D. And all we're going to do is minimap camera dot orthographic size equals orthographic size. Okay. And let's make this static so we can call it using the class reference. Instance dot minimap camera. Okay. And let's also do a public static float for get zoom, which will return the camera orthographic size. So return this. Okay. Let's also make some simple zoom in and zoom out functions. So a public static void zoom in and a public static void zoom out. Now on our wake, let's grab a float for our zoom, which will be our starting zoom. So in here, minimap camera dot orthographic size will be our starting zoom. And let's define some constants for how much we want to change the zoom. So up here, let's make a private const float and call it zoom change amount. And let's say 10 just for testing. Let's also make a zoom minimum and a zoom maximum. Okay, so with these values, let's use them in here. So when we're zooming in, again, remember this is the orthographic size which represents the amount in units that is displayed on the vertical axis by the camera. Essentially, the larger the orthographic size, the more the camera sees. So when we zoom in, we want the opposite, so we want to reduce the actual zoom. So do instance.zoom, let's reduce it by the zoom change amount. And let's do a test, just to make sure it doesn't go too small. and set the zoom to our instance.zoom. And for the zoom out, we do the opposite. Okay, so that's our minimap camera fully functioning. Now on the game handler, let's create some debug buttons to test the whole thing. I'm going to use the CM debug class to create some buttons on the UI to make testing very easy. Okay, so let's remove the previous testing code. And okay, so now we should have multiple buttons. Want to show and hide the minimap, show and hide the player icon, and zoom in and zoom out on the minimap camera. So let's test. Okay, here's all the buttons. Let's hide the minimap. And yep, we can hide and we can show. Great. Show and now hide and show the player icon. Great. And now we can zoom in on the minimap. Yep, there you go. Zoom in up to a maximum and zoom out, out, out. Okay, great. So we now have various very simple functions that we can use to manipulate our minimap to do whatever we want. Now in order to keep the minimap system nice and clean, let's make a simple main static class to handle everything related to our minimap. So in here, let's make a new c -sharp script and we're simply going to call this minimap. In here, this will be part of the minimap namespace. This will be a static class and it's a simple class. It does not inherit model behavior. So essentially we want all of the external code to go through this class and this class alone. So in here, let's make a public static void. Let's say show window. And inside we're going to go into our minimap window and show it. Same thing for hiding. Now let's expose the camera functions. So a public static void set zoom. It will go into the minimap camera and set the zoom. Now let's do the same for all the other functions. All right, so now this main class exposes all the functions used by the various components. 
So in the game handler, let's make sure we use the minimap instead of all of these. So in here, minimap.show window. All right, so now we have all of our code interacting only with a single class. So everything is nice and clean. Let's test and make sure everything still works exactly as previously. Yep, there it is, everything is still working. I can show and hide the minimap, show and hide the player icon, and zoom in and zoom out on the minimap. Yep, great. Now let's do one more thing, which is fire an event whenever something changes. So for example, on the minimap camera in here, would be quite useful to have an event that is fired whenever the zoom changes. So let's make a public static event. Let's simply make it event handler and let's call it on zoom changed. The event handler is part of the system namespace, okay. Now we could use a generic on the event handler in order to pass in the zoom, but for now let's leave it as is. So in here, whenever the zoom changes, let's fire this event if we do have subscribers. Okay, now on the minimap window, let's also make some events. Here, make a public static event, event handler, and let's call it on window show and on window hide. And let's fire these events in here. All right, now let's put it all together by capturing and refiring these events through the minimap main class. So in here, let's copy exactly the same events. And we're going to have a public static void init function that will initialize the various events. It will go into the minimap camera dot on zoom change. And here we're just going to fire the event through this class. And let's do the same thing for the others. All right, so again, now all we did was manage to make some specific events on each of the specific scripts then those events are captured by this main class and this main class fires them again. So this way we can have all of our external code interact only with this class and now we can do things when the zoom changes and when the window is shown or hidden. So for example, we can go into the minimap icon and here add a private void start and on start let's subscribe to the minimap dot on zoom change, subscribe to that event and essentially when the zoom changes we want the icon to modify its scale. Okay, so in here, our minimap icon, we subscribe to the on zoom changed event. And when that event is fired, we are modifying our local scale based on our base scale and then simply changing it based on the zoom. So if the zoom is of 180F, then we get the base scale. If it is lower, then we get a smaller icon. This way our icons don't take up the whole minimap when the minimap is fully zoomed in. So the last thing we need is to make sure that we actually call the minimap.init so that this can subscribe to all the various events. So for that, let's go into our game handler and here before we do anything, let's do minimap.init. Now in order to make sure our various scripts all initialize correctly, let's modify the script execution order. So on the editor, let's go into edit, project settings and script execution order. First, let's make the minimap camera execute first, then execute the window, and finally the icon. Then our game handler will execute on default, which happens after all of these. Then he will call the static class init function and everything should work perfectly fine. So let's see. Okay, there you go, everything is the same. There's the minimap, and now if I zoom in, you can see that the icons keep the same size. So they no longer become huge when the minimap is extremely zoomed in. And if I zoom out, Again, the icons still have the same size. All of that is happening through a very clean, nice class. And the minimap icons are simply subscribing to an event on that class and doing whatever they need to. So there you have it. We took our simple minimap and made some scripts to control it through code. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.